Hey robot makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to learn about how to use an 8x8 LED display with MicroPython? Then this is the show for you. Uh, let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Right, let me get myself over to Keynote and let's make a start. So I, I, I played with these quite a long time ago. One of the first projects I did with my Smars robots was with these 8x8 uh, displays. So I can't help, can't wait to sort of show you these and uh, how we can do things with MicroPython today. So yes, this is all about how to use the 8x8 LED or the HT16. Let me just mute that sound there. HT16K33 display driver with the uh, the display driver built onto the uh, the chip there. Uh, the 8x8 display, we're going to have a look at some of the wiring, how to wire this up to a Pico. We're going to have a look at something I call Facebot, which is a cute little 3D printed robot to showcase some of these features today. Uh, and we're going to have some fun with some emojis, some bitmaps, uh, faces, scrolling text and so on. Uh, and we'll have a bit of a demo as, as well, why not? And if you're here for the live stream, we'll also have a bit of a, a, a mailbox and a QA and a as well. Okay, let's get straight to it, shall we? So the inspiration behind this, I was thinking about Smars robots. I've got a, a shelf full of Smars robots. Let me drop that one then. <laughs> it looks really bad on this camera. I don't know why that is. If I go to the overhead camera, it's not flickering quite as bad. Uh, but it has like a little LED the matrix display on this and this was with an arduino this has an arduino uno in it uh, and obviously this is running on c uh, and i love these little robots they're, they're really cute they've got really nice kind of desktop size they're quite quick to 3d print and all the parts including these mechanical tracks are all 3d printable as well so i was thinking about i want to develop this further and i've got an idea i like these kitronics um uh, robot robotics board and it's called a pico robotics board and you can put your raspberry pi pico on there and you've got a whole bunch of um, terminals on the edge there where you can connect up motors and power and so on uh, and even servos so i was thinking we need to bring all the things that we've done on the smiles robots into this ecosystem uh, with micropython so that was kind of where i was coming from with this i was thinking about a pico smiles version 2 I did, a, I did I did a Pico Smiles a while back. It's behind me, actually, just that yellow robot just there. Uh, and that had quite a few things, and that was heavily based around the um, Pimeroni Inventor, um, Inventor 2040W. So I was thinking about if we were going to use a regular Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico W, I was looking to see if I have one to hand. But you know what I'm sort of talking about. There we go. Got one just behind me. We have one of these regular Raspberry Pi Pico Ws with the, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth chip on there. What could we do with that? What kind of uh, motor boards, what kind of extra add-ons would we like to have? So these Smiles robots, one of the really great things I like about them is the, the, the shield that goes on top is absolutely jam-packed full of goodies. So there's like a little buzzer on there. There's a header for like a Bluetooth connector because these have come with Bluetooth. Um, there is... Um, header for ultrasound so you can put your ultrasonic rangefinder and just connect that direct to the headers they've got all these servos on there so it's kind of like an inventor 2040w um, but as like an add-on shield but one of the other really good things about this is you could plug a 9 volt battery into this and power these motors and they'll be really really strong and one of the things and i fed this back to chris about the inventor 2040w um, the power to the motors is quite anemic so i want to be able to put like a 9 volt battery in there and give it like loads of loads of go so these things can crawl over anything so here's my wish list of things i want to build into pico smarts 2 so i want to have a buzzer so i can do music as well as beeps and uh, whistles and things i want to have an iron you so i can do positioning uh, i've been starting to work on that i've got a little um uh, pico explorer board here from pimro that i used for doing all my kind of breadboarding because they've got all the nicer uh, pinouts and things and you can just plug your pico directly into the board there um, so i've got an imu on there i'm going to play around with that I want to do the usual kind of distance range finding, which we've done many times before on a lot of our robots. I also want a battery level monitor. So I want to be able to detect what the current battery level is uh, and therefore as a percentage, how much battery, how much juice have we got? The other thing I wanted to include on here was the 8x8 display. So we can do scrolling text, we can do faces, emojis, and that's really what today's show is all about. And I also wanted to include the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities of the Pico W. So that's kind of the inspiration. That's what this will do eventually. But there's quite a lot of different parts that need to go into this. And I'll probably be building this over a couple of weeks. Uh, but it'll be kind of the Smars um, version 2 of the 20 2023 version of that. So... The, uh, the display uses I squared C. 
So if we have a quick look at some of the basics of this uh, I squared C, I was going to say I2C, but I think it is I squared C. Uh, and the idea behind this is you can have a master device and you can have many slave devices. Not really great to... Uh, uh, language they're using this but it's quite old-fashioned I think it was a uh, Philips invented this in the, the 70s it's quite an old uh, technology uh, and yes yeah, so you can have a master you can actually have several masters on the same bus but usually you just have one that's in control otherwise it'll just be chaos and you can have uh, quite a few different slave units on there as well and the master uh, will essentially just pulse on the uh, uh, on the data line at a given clock period there'll be sort of acknowledges and no acknowledges back and so on it's kind of a handshaking protocol that goes on and essentially you can then just write to a memory address as if it's just local to your processor um, so that's what i squared c does it enables us to to uh, communicate with other devices in a really standard very very simple way with just two wires so really 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 simple so a couple of common addresses uh, for a couple of common uh, devices that you might plug in with I squared C. So you've got things like real time clocks, you've got temperature sensors, gyro and accelerometers, you've got uh, magnetometers, light sensors, uh, DACs, digital to analog converters and analog to digital converters. You've got all the displays like the SSD 1306 and you've got things like expanders as well. So they on the, if you look on the right hand side column there, we've got the decimal address and that's usually what we, we uh, put into our code as being the address that we want to communicate to. Uh, there's no real standard behind these addresses. These are just um, uh, kind of defunct, um, de facto, de facto standards. Uh, rather than it being like an official standard so the actual display itself this um so the ht 16 k 33 is actually the display driver it's the same display driver you will find in those um eight like number eight displays what they call seven segment displays they usually have seven segments and a full stop so actually eight uh, and they use this same driver but this driver can also be laid out in this kind of um, configuration you can either have like two or four or eight of these um, all joined together as well uh, and this means that we can actually individually address these pixels uh, and we just need four cables to do this we just have the clock we have the data and then we have the voltage and ground and this works fine with the 3.3 volts that the raspberry pi pico uh, can provide so even though it's quite low power it's still more than bright enough to uh, to shine uh, and we can do all kinds of clever things with this with it being eight pixels i mean i've managed to get scrolling text on a five by five pixel display and that's what they use on the uh, uh the micro bit as well so eight by eight is like glorious that's there's loads of uh, pixels for us to play with there so the font i created for the, the the pico birthday card if you remember that project that had a little five by five display in there and i had some scrolling text that sort of said happy birthday to alex on it well this we can use that exact same font um, and some of the similar code we just need to tweak it a bit so it's uh, eight by eight and then we can use that to display scrolling text as well so we can do all kinds of clever things now one of the, the, the limitations on the smiles robots when i had um, this set up you can just about see his, uh, his face flickering there on the camera it's just the refresh rate and the refresh rate of this sort of clashing a little bit it looks fine on the overhead camera uh, but yes one of the things that was a limitation here is that the the arduino has like really really limited amounts of ram so the number of um animations that you could probably squeeze into that was very very low whereas the pico by comparison or the esp32 or one of the uh, adafruit feathers hazards that kind of thing they have bags of memory compared so we can do all kinds of clever stuff because these are just on or off uh, ones and zeros they're very very small when it comes to uh, space so we can do all kinds of clever stuff with this so to wire it up is very very simple we just need to collect the um the 3.3 volts of the 3.3 volt out which is pin 36 on the pico there and then any of the ground pins on the pico we can use them using pin 8 on there and then we just connect the data in the clock so the data is the very top pin um, on the pico pin 0 and uh, gpio 1 is the clock so that's all we need to do the wiring couldn't be simpler a lot of these um, also come with the uh, dupont connectors installed on them so very very easy to wire up as well if you look online to purchase some of these and you find some for around say three or four dollars they probably haven't got the driver chip on the back so you'll have to connect in like eight cables and then eight other cables to do the rows and the columns the sort of scanning of that or if you go for the ones with the chip on the back um, you, you can just have the i squared c so it's just four cables just four connectors so look out for that they're usually about nine pounds 
nine dollars thereabouts so yes very very simple grid arrangement um i think this is correct the top left is uh one on one on the orientation that i've got i've messed about with this so much i don't think i'm using the correct orientation we'll have a look at that in the code later on i'll show you some of the hacky things i've done to make this work but but it, it works <laughs> Um, if you like these kinds of videos as well and you want to help me grow my channel, then please make sure you give this video a like. Drop me a comment. Uh, let me know if you've used any of these displays before and if you have any intentions for them. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, which about 70% people haven't, um, make sure you subscribe to the uh, the channel. It means a lot to me and it helps uh, the, the channel grow. And I do go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock. Come right now, shine. It's really, really sunshiny today. So uh, it's a shine day today. Uh, and it's usually uh, 7 o'clock UK local time. So we're currently in uh, uh, BST, British summer time. So... The only limit is your imagination and even more so with the Pico because there is so much more memory that we can put extra kinds of animations and uh, design all kinds of uh, icons and things on our display. I'm going to show you a really cool tool that I've developed to make this even easier as well. It's, uh, it's part of the software library I've created for this. So the process is we get a little piece of paper, maybe a post-it note. We draw a little grid on it and then we'll design what we want our icon to be. Uh, and then we can go over to like an icon making tool like i'll show you in a minute and then we can basically just um, draw that and then have it output what the, uh, the the code is that we need to cut and paste into our program if you're comfortable doing this you can probably just do it by eyeball after a while you can basically just see the almost like the matrix you can see what the the bitmap is just by the raw binary so um you get used to that after a while so if you look on this uh this screen here you can see these sort of I was going to say circular, but it's these sort of square areas here. You can see the ones representing that there in that array. And then there's the sort of smiley bit as well. So that's going to be the things that light up when we pass this to our code. And our code will simply go through um, rows and columns and it will say for everything that's a one, light up that LED, uh, that X and Y coordinate, otherwise turn it off. It's as simple as that. So here's another example of uh, what this looks like in uh, MicroPython code. And you see this is a heart um, symbol. So the 0B01100, the binary line for that particular row. The 0B means the following is going to be binary code. So we interpret it as zeros and ones for binary. Uh, if we put this in speech marks, that would be considered to be text. And each character would be two bytes in size because it's Unicode. So that would take up quite a lot more memory. Whereas if we store this in binary, that entire row is just one byte. It's just one tiny, tiny uh, amount of information. So in MicroPython, we can use that 0B to signify that what follows is binary. So that's uh, just a little tip there. And we put these into um, a, a list. I'm going to say a dictionary, but I think this is just a list. Um, and we've simply just got rows and rows um, of data. So that makes up our, our icon. So the actual library itself I've created for this and I say I've created, I had some help creating this. The person who created this doesn't actually know that they contributed to this. <laughs> so that I was looking online to see, has anybody created a HT16K33 library for MicroPython? Uh, Adafruit had, but they did it for CircuitPython and somebody had kindly um, ported this across to regular MicroPython, though they'd never tested it. And that's Dale, one of our uh, hybrid robotics, um, who's a member of our channel. So a lot of the code that you see, uh, we'll have a look at in a minute, uh, Dale's actually coded that. I've just tweaked it and added extra bits to it, and I'll call out the bits of uh, extra bits I've added to this. So yeah, we can very simply clear the display just by doing like matrix.clear. We can draw something by doing matrix.pixel and then just do the x, y coordinates and a, a zero or a one to say is it on or off. And then we can just do a sleep command just to make it wait for an amount of time so that we can animate this. And similarly, if we want to display an entire um, icon that's predefined, we can I'll show you how to predefine these. It's so much fun. Uh, we can do something like show icon um, and then heart. So there's quite a few different ones we can play with uh, that are built in that I've I've built in for you. If you want to grab these, you can head over to kevsrobots.com slash facebot and all the links to the code uh, and the write up you'll find uh, on the website there. So, yeah, nice and easy to do. 
So yeah, all these animations are is simply a sequence of bitmaps. So if we have, for example, two bitmaps, we have one where the robot's just smiling, and then there's another one where he's sleeping, where his eyes are sort of shut. We can alternate that to make it look like it's blinking. And in fact, that's what I've actually got going on at the moment um, um, on the on this little robot here. So he's got a little face there, and occasionally you'll just see him blink like that. And then he does the oof thing, and there's all kinds of other animations. We'll have a look at how that actual code works uh, in a second on the, the demo. But a sim simply, we just need to put in a function uh, and we can give the name of the function something like blink, for example, and it would just say load the icon for smile for a second, then load the blinking, which is the eyes closed one, uh, for say a tenth of a second, then the regular one back to him smiling again and then back to the uh, eyes closed one and then back to the thing. If you do it quick enough, it actually looks like it's... Uh, it's animated, uh, so it's really pretty pretty simple to do, but really effective and really, really satisfying when you get these working. So, a bonus. I've uh, designed quite a few faces already. I actually designed these for the Smiles robot back in the day. Uh, so there's just examples of uh, what the code looks like for them behind the scenes. So you get the idea there. You can you can start to see the, the picture and paint with ones rather than thinking of it uh, being binary. OK, and then this is what I've created uh, this weekend with a bit of help from ChatGPT, perhaps. Uh, so this is a, a TK Inter um, or Tkinter user interface app for creating 8x8 icons. So you can simply just copy and paste the code that gets generated underneath into your icon uh, Python program. And it will have created that for you just by drawing on it. It's so much fun. It's so simple to do. Uh, so we'll have a play with that. And we can even give it a name and it will name that particular list. Um, with the name that you provide it. So that's all part of the uh, the library that I've put together for you today. So I've created a new robot to showcase these features. I always like to create a new robot wherever I can. So this one is simply just called FaceBot because it's just a face. Uh, and it's also powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico W. So we could potentially connect this to like an MQTT server. So you can have something uh, generate an event that makes some text get triggered to say, you know, somebody's at the door or it could do anything you want. Any text you could have um, you know, uh, published to an MQTT server, this could take that and then just show it. So as simple as that. And it can also just do cute faces. It can be a companion robot for your desk. And because it's a Raspberry Pi Pico, you can power that by any kind of uh, battery or just a regular USB cable. It couldn't be simpler to wire this up. It's just four cables. I've actually not got this soldered together. This one is simply just got the DuPont cables plugged in. So the whole thing can come apart and be reused for another project if uh, required. And it's programmed just with MicroPython, just using our regular USB cable, nice and simple. And there's only three parts of this. It prints in about six hours. Um, and you could probably even get it print a lot quicker than that if you have it on like a standard setting rather than the, uh, the, the finest quality. Uh, and it's just got two legs there and you can just screw them in with some M5 screws. Simple as that. So this is a FaceBot. So here's some of the construction of it. The, the STL files are available if you go to kevsrobots.com slash facebot. You can find the body.stl, the left uh, underscore leg.stl, and the right underscore leg.stl. And that's all you need. You just need to bring the little display uh, and the Pico and away you go. You could probably even use a different kind of chip as well. So there's, um, there's all kinds of other microcontrollers that you could potentially use with this as well. Uh, they're all compatible. They all run MicroPython, but this one's specifically designed for the Pico, Pico W. So yes, grab those files if you want and let me know. Certainly send me a picture. So let's have a play with this, shall we? I really can't wait to show you this. I just need to get my notes ready. So uh, let me just go to the overhead camera for a second. I'll get my notes on the other screen so I can uh, play along here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you it for a second. So this is... Um, face bot you can see there that the pico is kind of at a diagonal angle there just so that it's uh, can print in the sort of smallest space necessary for that and these legs mean that you can sort of tilt it up and down like so uh, and it'll move about like that and then the animations there you can see if i turn the overhead lights off a little bit then you'll be able to see there so it says hey robot makers exclamation mark and then it'll go back to the other animation again where it's just doing the smiley face and blinking. So he blinks and then he does the oof and then the heart growing animation. And then back to the scrolly text again. 
I quite like this text because it's got uppercase and lowercase characters, all within a 5x5 five five, um, font. And the characters are even pr um, proportionally spaced. They're not fixed space. So you get quite a nice effect there. So that's the animation. We'll have a look at how we actually do this in the code. And the other thing I'm going to show you then is just how we wire this. So if I just hold this up to the camera here, oops, not too close. Uh, you can see there we've got the uh, the clock, the data, the voltage and the ground, the top there. And that simply just plugs into those um, cables that we said before. So on the right hand side, we've got the top one is the data. The second one, which is the blue one, that's the clock. And then we have uh, we have the ground, which is the gray. And then the purple one is the 3.3 the volts out. I've also got uh, two little screws there, some M2 screws, uh, just holding that into place. And it's got these M5 screws just on the side. So you can put them on your desk and you can just angle it. This is the uh, the Smiles robot that I was uh, inspired by to create this little bot. So it's just a little standalone robot. This one obviously is uh, Arduino powered, whereas this is Raspberry Pi Pico powered. Okay, so let me go over to um, the... I'll go to this view here and let me get Thonny up and let me just move this down a bit so we can we can see what we're doing. So the, the library that I've created, let me walk you through some of the files there. So they're all inside this HT16K33 folder uh, and in there there is a couple of files. So we have this init, so this double dundo or double underscore init.py. So that is, you can see there, originally written by um, Radomir then Tony and then Dale. And then I've uh, added some extra bits to the bottom here. So on the bottom here, I've added, um, I've made it work with a Pico and tested the code. I've added some text scrolling and some support for icons, excuse me, as well. So the first block of code um, is pretty standard. That's what you'd expect to see there. We're just bringing in the, uh, the I squared C uh, library so we can do stuff with that. We set up a couple of constants there and these values are specific to this display driver. So don't worry about what these esoteric, you know, um, if you see zero X and then a number, it, what it means is what follows is hexadecimal. So you'll see like it can cont uh, contain characters A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, and then, you know, zero to nine as well. So those, those values are hexadecimal values, not decimal values. If we have the zero B, then that follows is binary. So we've got a couple of constants there that we're setting up for things like the blink command, the blink display on, the command brightness. So we can change the brightness levels of this display, which is pretty neat. Uh, I think that's an overall brightness and not brightness per pixel, but I'll, I'll have a look into see if we can do something with that. I'm then bringing in a load of icons. So from our icons, there's a heart, there's a smile, there's a sad, there's ghost, there's a small heart, there's tick, there's skull, cross, micropython, We'll have a look at that one. Happy, neutral, sad face, eyes closed, wink and oof. Uh, and then we're also bringing in scroller, which is the code that does all the scrolly text. So fonts. So I designed this font uh, last year uh, and this one I've called this font Johnny 5 because it's 5x5. Five five. Uh, and you can see there. So, for example, a space takes up three characters. And what I'm doing here is something pretty inefficient. I'm actually storing these these ones and zeros as text. So for each line that each character is actually two bytes in size. So that's um, six bytes just to represent that first line of the character. So it's pretty ineffective that you can see the, the capital A there, for example, the ones and the, the cross T bar there of the A. Um, so what I'm intending to do in the future is do it a lot more efficiently by storing them in binary. So for example, the A there, uh, you can still see the, the the pixels that make this up. It's just stored um, rather than being row after row. The rows are all on the same line just for, for uh, brevity, really. And I've also included there just how many pixels wide each character is, because the thing that we can do on our regular fonts one is we can just say, what's the length of that string? Uh, and the length of the string is um, how many characters are in the string, whereas we can't do that if it's binary. Um, it'll just fill the end until um, it'll essentially just fill the beginning, I suppose, with zeros. So we'll not know how many bytes, uh, how many pixels wide the, the character is. So we just need to store that. But it's a small thing and then we can have the rest of the characters in there. But this will overall be a lot more efficient on space than storing everything as strings. 
but it works so for now that's fine that uh, font bitmap is a future development icons.py contains all the individual icons you can see there the ghost one for example I'll display that one in a second and you can, you can see what that actually looks like we've got sad we've got smile and so on so we're going to use that um, icon maker tool in a second to create some extra icons and then we've got this scroller um, function which um, is a class for doing all kinds of scrolling text uh, it's a bit of a mess this if i'm honest i think i need to go back and just re um refactor some of this code i'm not happy with the, the way some of it works um, the rotation i need to be able to rotate the text direction that it scrolls from so you can change depending on how you have your display oriented you can basically just say rotate 90 rotate 270. Uh, to do that i need something like numpy and i believe that numpy you can get a scaled down version for micropython so i'm going to look into that as well uh, but there we go that's the the five pieces of code that are in there um, so next up what we'll do let's have a look um, let's have a look at the uh, init pi so what i will do i'll just close some of these out uh, let me just open up this code here right so what i, what I wanted to show in here then so this class represents the uh, the, the backpack displays as they call them for um from adafruit so we've got this init function here and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to receive into our code an i squared c um, object so it's already been set up with the correct pins and the correct id and if you know anything about raspberry pi picos um, then you will know that there is a number of different buses uh, on here so there's actually two i squared c buses zero and one uh, and they're actually on different pairs of pins but you can't use this you can't use two lots of, from the same bus you can only use the one bus once if that makes sense um, though in theory if you have different devices with different addresses that they can all be on the same bus or different buses it's fine so that's what we mean when we pass in the i squared c object it's just got the right pins set up for that already uh, the, the address for that particular display is is a hexadecimal 70 so that's being passed in uh, there and then auto write true and brightness one so auto write is when we have displays and we are writing pixels to a display if when we write the pixel to a buffer area of memory if that immediately wrote that to the display itself you would start to see a flicker the flicker would be in between the lines of code so what we tend to do to stop that flicker is do all our operations on the buffer and then write the buffer all in one go to the to the uh, display uh, memory so auto write is a way of turning that on or off depending on what we are doing and then brightness is just a value between zero and one for the brightness of the display we can have a play with that in a second as well so we're passing through that address we're passing through that i squared c uh, we're creating some buffers for memory we're then setting whether we want this auto write to be true or false um, the fill i think is just um, going to fill the display with black because we're going to write um, fill is a function further down that we define that um, if you pass in a one or a zero it'll either write laws of uh, lights on or lights off we've then got this uh, write command oscillator on i think that's just for the internal device driver uh, they've got blink rates and brightness we were just setting those to defaults uh, and then the blink rate we're setting to zero and the brightness we're setting to brightness and then again we're doing another fill i don't know why we do two lots of fill there um, maybe we could get rid of one of those so then that this is the bit i wanted to show you so the write command this is where we actually do writing to the i squared c bus so behind the scenes we say um we're just grabbing the in this this uh, temp from this temp um array which is just a, a piece of a, a piece of memory we're just going to grab a byte and we're going to wrap we're going to write that byte uh, out to the i squared c bus so this is the command that does it i squared c dot write to then we need the address of the device it's being written to which is our display and then the actual byte that's being written out or bytes could be multiple bytes for example but write to is what actually makes the magic happen that's how we actually write to the display uh, they've got a couple of other things on there about blinking we don't need to worry about that we've got these properties which mean we can get or set the brightness value as if it's just a local a variable so we can set that to be uh, between zero and one a bit nice bit of error checking there as well uh, and then 
to actually set the brightness we have to do some we have to do some stuff with it so we have to round the number we have to times it by 15 um, and then we then uh, we then do a logical and operation to this 0f which is like a hexadecimal value we bang them together and then we write the results of that onto the using that write command to the i squared c bus and the command brightness is one of those things we defined further up which is just there so that constant value is how you tell that particular display to to set the brightness is like a special command for that so this pretty low level things like that you don't have to worry about those all you really need to know is what the function name is and what the parameters are that it takes um, so for example auto write true or false for example we then got show or update update basically just exactly the same as up, uh, show but i prefer the term update uh, and that just again writes um, the buffer the whole buffer nothing but the buffer to the uh, i squared c address of that device so that'll just blitz it on there we've got that fill one that we saw at the very beginning of the code and this one essentially just does a for loop through all the different pixels and just writes them to a specific value clear does exactly the same as fill i think clear is a, a much clearer command than fill if you want to clear the display i've then got this reverse pixel just ignore that for now that's just uh, some janky code that i created and then this is something else i wanted to show you so when i was creating the code for this when i said i want to draw a pixel in the top left of the display it would display on the top right and then when i'd say draw it one pixel in so remember these things start at zero and then go all the way to seven on an eight bit display um, so it kind of wrapped around in a weird way and I'm not sure why it's doing that so I've basically just done some more janky code I've created a little mapping list here so that's the list so seven zero one two three four five six and then it wraps around to seven and then as the pixel comes in we basically just say right wh whatever the value is on here <laughs> just map it and then it'll just work it's janky and it's like two lines of code to be honest when you're doing graphic stuff you want as little code as possible and it to run as fast as possible so the more janky things you've got in between your code and the display operations um, you know the better really so then we've got this address and this mask there again just functions for mapping into memory uh, from a coordinate system because we're mapping um, integers like x and y values into bits that are on a display and bits are within a byte so you have to do some uh, bit shifting which is what this double um, arrow thing here is this is like a logical sh shift to the left it kind of divides the number by a certain value that percentage number there that's a modulus so that just makes uh, throws away in a rem remainders when you do a division or just gets the the remainder if you're doing a division that's modulus uh, and then we've got some things there it says color it's really just black and white so we, we just uh, do some operations there and again there's some logical operations um, depending on whether the color is um, going to be set or cleared so that's the uh, the setting of the pixels and then we've got the set the buffers and get the buffers they're just going to do exactly what we expect their pass values into our off screen uh, buffer area and then this is one for displaying icons so icon will simply just go through an icon array that we create and it will for each pixel it will just light that pixel up so it'll just do a set pixel or pixel for the row and columns for each of the bits within our um, our, our icon array we can also just display it by name so i've created some um, some pre-existing um, icons i want to show you why i've created this so let me go out for a second i'll go full screen on this one I absolutely love this Microsoft Make Code for Microbit. They've really created a really nice environment for people who are learning how to code. So if you grab this uh, show LEDs, for example, you can just draw in here. I love that. I love how simple it is that you can basically just draw like a little face. Let's just uh, draw a little face on here. And you can just click and drag as well. So you can make a little smiley face, for example just with a five by five display that is so intuitive and so easy to do i absolutely love that they also have a pretty cool one for doing music as well so if you grab, grab like a, a note there you've got like a little piano you can you can play on which is pretty neat so uh, yeah i was like, really inspired by with uh, that show leds user interface 
And behind the scenes, if we actually look on the, say, the Python code for that, you can see what it's done there. It's just created uh, a little text uh, area and wherever there's a hash, that's where the light will be on. That's what they've created there. So if I go back there and just uh, create like a little, I don't know, square shape, for example, and then go back to the Python, you'll then see that that's represented there. So I like how that, that kind of works. So that's kind of what I was thinking about um, when I was when I was creating the code for mine. Let me just show you another one that they have in here. Um, so they have show icon. So if I click on show icon, they've got a whole number. They've got like hearts, a big heart, a small heart. They've got a tick and a cross, a smiley face, a sad face. They have um, like a duck. They have a T-shirt. I think there's a giraffe in there. They've got a little ghost, a little uh, skull, an umbrella, and so on, a little snake. So that's kind of inspired me to create a set for our own. So we've got a very similar kind of set on there. So instead of a snake, we've got a MicroPython logo, uh, but we have got the skull and we have got the ghost as well. So um, they essentially what's happening there is we're mapping uh, a text string to the object that has the, the data in it for this. So when somebody says um, loading a particular name, it just checks is the is the dis the, the the icon that they're passing in is it within that particular valid list? If it is, then we can then display it. So if the name is in the icons list, then show it. So that's that. So if we go across now to the test program, uh, I put a couple of things in here just to play with. So. Let me show you, um, so the, we'll, we'll basically just come down to this bottom here where it just says while true. So if I just stop this demo code, if I just comment out and let's do matrix is just the name of the of the class that we've uh, created for this. So it basically just takes that uh, HT 16K33 um, library and then we just created the, the variable name matrix to uh, um, to represent that. So if I do show icon and then I do ghost and I go over to here and I click run. Can you see there we've got the little Pac-Man ghost. We can uh, turn that overhead camera off a little bit of the thing off there. So if we now go and change that to, for example, skull and run skull instead, <laughs> we've got the skull and we could do like the happy, oops, like so happy, run that, Got happy face, we can do sad face, run that, and so on. So you get the idea. I think that sad face is not quite the same sad face. Sad face, is that the other one? Yes, there we go, that's, <laughs> that's happy. There we go. And we can, I think there's also like an eyes closed one as well. So we can animate these. So we do eyes closed. And there we go. So he's got his eyes closed and he's smiling as well. So in the uh, the demo code up here, I've got a couple of extra functions that I've created. Let me find the one, which is the blinking one. So this one's called blink. It's got a, a variable there, a parameter that's called times. So how many times do we want to run this animation? Um, and we don't actually need to represent that. So we can actually use that underscore. So we can say for whatever in the range of times. So if we pass in 10 times, it'll do the animation 10 times round. So it's going to display the happy face. It's going to wait for a tenth of a second. Then it's going to clear the display. And then it's going to show the um, cl eyes closed one, which is the, the one it's currently showing. And then it's going to do that for a tenth of a second. It's then going to do the happy face and then it's going to wait a tenth of a second and then clear the display. And at the end of that, it will clear the display in between each of those loops. So if we run that, that's simply called blink. So if we go down to the bottom of our code, let's just comment out that one and do blink. And let's just say, do the animation 10 times. Um, and then what we'll say is a matrix dot clear. This is just so you know it's stopped, otherwise it'll keep going around. It just occurred to me then. Uh, so let's just sleep for two seconds. Right, so we run this. It's blinking 10 times, which seems a bit excessive, and then it'll go off for two seconds, and then it'll go around again. So you can see how we can do animations there. We could make it blink even faster just by reducing that uh, tenth of a second to something even smaller. 
Uh, and if you find yourself writing the same value over and over again like this, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, it's probably best you actually store that in a variable. So we could say um, speed equals 0 0.1, and then we could change that to be speed throughout our code. And then we only have to change that one variable value to change the overall speed. So let's change that to, I don't know, 0 0.5. So it's even faster. It's be twice as fast. <laughs> it's like blinking really fast now. Uh, we can even turn off those matrix clear things to see what happens there as well if we do that. So he just looks like he's blinking a lot. Uh, or we can slow it right down. We could change that speed to just be like one second and it'll just like really slowly blink, which doesn't look quite as natural. And we might decide that one of these is actually the half of the speed halfway through so you can see there we've got speed equals one and then um, we can have half the speed halfway through there we go so that kind of idea right what else can we do on here then so we've had a look at the ghost and the skull um, i wanted to show you how to do um, the blinking didn't that the the blinking the how to create your own icons so let me go into uh, the root of here. So I've got this icon maker program. Let me go back over to full screen. So I've got this icon maker, but it's probably easier if I show you this um, running from a terminal. So let me just go into uh, my MicroPython folder, and then this is a uh, Pico Mars 2, and then what I've had to do is create a, because I'm using the TK Inter library, uh, I've needed to create a virtual environment. So I just need to do source and then the virtual environment just to activate it. And if I then do Python 3 and then the icon maker, it'll then create a little user interface. Look at this. <laughs> this is really cool. So what I was going to do is the, uh, the sleepy icon. So let me just, uh, let me find the sleepy icon. Um, I think in our presentation that we had before, if I just go over here, uh, let's have a look at that sleepy one. So he's got eyes open and then there's like a great big mouth like that. Okay, I think I've understood that. So what I will do is um, I'll draw the eyes closed and then the great big mouth like so. Oops. And then we're going to call this one sleepy. So if I say generate code, it's created the uh, the code that I need to just copy and paste. So if I just do copy there, I can then come back over into our library, into our icons folder and at the very bottom of this. I can just add sleepy in there as well. So if I save that, I go back to our init pie and I add in on here. In fact, at the very top of here, I need to bring that in as one of the things I uh, import so at the very end we need a sleepy we did just call it sleepy didn't we uh, let me just see what we call that yep sleepy uh, and then at the very bottom of the code we just need to add it to this list of valid icon mappings so let's just do sleepy and then sleepy like so okay so now that that's there because this is uh, going to be installed on the, the Pico itself, what we have to do is upload it. So I'm going to upload the entire folder, get it to overwrite all the things that are in that library that's there. And now we've got back to our matrix, matrix test program. We can then do, um, let's do this instead of happy, let's do sleepy. And let's just comment out those other bits. And then we should just run our sleepy code. So let's do that. Let's go back over to that view there. There you go. So you can see there that is yawning. So we could do an animation where he's, he's, he's a normal face, then yawning, and then, then his eyes are closed. So we could very, very quickly just do that. If we go back up here, let's create a little function. Let's just call it um, sleepy time or something like that. And so what we want to do, let me just grab that code there so we're going to have the um, let's start out with the happy face we're going to have the happy face for I don't know half a second 
Then we're going to do that yawning face, or sleepy as I called it. Sleepy. That's also going to be for maybe a quarter of a second. Then we're going to have the face that's called, is it sleep? What did I actually call that on there? Let me find it. So this sleepy, eyes closed, that's the one. So back on our eyes closed. Like that. So he's going to do sleepy face, eyes closed. Um, and then that's going to be it. So. So that's called sleepy time. So if I come down here, I can then basically just call sleepy time. Like that. Let's try that. So if I now run this code, there we go. So he's, uh, he's in a happy face and then he's not sleeping for long enough there. So we can go back up to our sleepy time and we can make that sleep for like, I don't know, a second or something. And he's yawning a bit too quickly there, so let's make that half a second. So he's happy, he's yawning, and then he's gone back asleep. <laughs> you get the idea. So by creating little functions like this uh, sleepy time one with the, the animation frames in there, you can create an all kinds of behaviours and things that will be fun for your um, for your robot to do. So the last thing was the uh, the message. So let's just do that. That's a really, really simple one to do. So we come down here, let's get rid of our sleepy time. We're going to have a message that simply says, um, we've already said, hey, robot makers, let's try. Um, robots are cool. And then maybe two at symbols for like crazy eyes or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then, yes, yeah, show message. That's all we need to do. So if I do run. You'll see it says robots are cool. And then there's crazy eyes. <laughs> so yeah, it'll just do that once because um, oh, actually it should run that again after a couple of seconds. Yes, uh, we've, we've put a couple of lead spaces in here as well. If I get rid of those and I just run this first off, it kind of starts with the text already in the position. Really, it should sweeping from the left hand side so I've cheated just by doing a couple of spaces just so that it scrolls in because the spaces take up three characters each and there's a, a gap character between each character as well so that's how we do a uh, scrolly text it's pretty cool scrolly text I'm quite impressed with that it's something that we can have um, on a tiny little robot just on our desk uh, with a very very cheap display but it means we can do all kinds of clever things with mqtt we can get it to display error messages from somewhere or how many subscribers we've got all kinds of things like that just on a little desktop robot powered by a raspberry pi pico uh, so i think that's everything i was going to show you on the uh, uh the icon maker and the the demo reel of things that we can do on there let me know if there's anything else you want to see on that one but um that's pretty much what um Facebook actually does. Cool. So let me get back over to uh, Keynote. So we, we looked at that one. We were just on the demo there, weren't we? Hide that way. You're not supposed to see that. Cool. So if you want to learn more about robotics and MicroPython, you want to do a MicroPython course, head over to kezrobots.com slash learn slash and you can start a free course today. No sign up required, just straight into the course materials and away you go. Um, it doesn't say progress or anything like that. You can just save that as a favorite um, if you need to sort of remember where you're up to. But it's very, very simple to use. Let me know if there's any other courses that you want me to build out there. Uh, I've got a, a very simple system that I can create a couple of markdown files, publish it as a course, uh, and it can look quite fancy with quite little effort. So I've got a system I created in Python for that. We also have merch. <laughs> so if you want to help support the show, we have our whole kinds of merch, hats and mugs and um, notepads and so on, t-shirts, hoodies. Uh, check out the merch store and uh, help support the show. And if you want to uh, join our Discord server, you can do that as well completely for free. Head over to kezrobots.com slash Discord uh, and you can join, sign up uh, for that today. Again, it's completely free to do. And it's a really cool community of people all helping each other. I've had a lot of people recently, particularly this week, reach out to me on social media, like direct messages, 
asking can I help them with the various different problems that they've got. Sometimes people might ask on YouTube about a particular problem they have with a code that I wrote years ago. The best place to get answers for that is in Discord because I'm not the only person who's in there and I'm not the smartest person in the room in there. So uh, yeah, particularly if Dale's in. <laughs> So um, if you want to follow me on social media, there's a whole different number of places you can do that. You can go on threads. So I'm at Kevin McAleer at threads.net. Uh, I'm on TikTok at Kevin McAleer 6. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Kevin McAleer. And I'm on uh, X, which is at Kev's Mac. Twitter. Why are we still calling it X? It's just wrong. Uh, and then Mastodon Social. I'm at Kev's Mac at Mastodon.social. I didn't have the foresight to have a unique naming convention for all the social media so it is what it is <laughs> uh, if you want to follow if you want to help support the show as well there's a number of different ways that you can do that so you can get your name in the end credits which i'll show in a second uh, if you can head over to kezrobots.com coffee you can buy me a physical coffee i do like coffee uh, it keeps me going in the morning it keeps the code coming uh, you can do a super thanks we had somebody very generously do a super thanks uh, uh, quite recently you can do a super chat if you're watching live now let me make sure i've got the uh, the widgets and everything enabled for that to display there we go and if you want to join the youtube membership program you can also do that just by clicking the little join button at the bottom of the screen and they all support the show and thank you everybody to the, who's done that so far okay so the supporters the people who have already very generously why is that done that? <laughs> let me just adjust this i think it does this when uh I've not quite got there we go <laughs> I've not quite got the uh the size correct so supporter wise we have uh, steve gale we have uh, somebody who wanted to remain anonymous so thank you Stephen, and to the anonymous person for the coffees they were very greatly received member wise we have uh, adam Sargent, who is a uh, haunted uh, howarth if you've ever been to uh, howarth uh, it looks like it's pronounced hayworth but i'm pretty sure it's pronounced howarth uh, that's been uh, in yorkshire uh, and he does some really cool haunted tours around Howarth um, on a Friday Saturday evening so check out Haunted Howarth for that we've got D, uh, DN, uh, DN Corte we've got Marlene Brent we have uh, John Rank Tom we have Shemi and Steve Phillips and uh, on the YouTube membership side we've got Tinkering Rocks we've got uh, Dale from Hybrid Robotics thank you Dale for the code for the uh, the display driver today as well we've got Cassie we've got uh, JDM we've got uh, Johnny Bates Bill Hoy Orcsrad39 we've got Javi Gold we've got Hans from Cheerlights we've got uh, Michael and of course Tom so thank you for all supporting the show I really do appreciate that and uh, that's everything I've got for you today so if you're watching this on replay this is the point in the video I'll say thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time